Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video with my A45S today. I've owned this car now for just under a year. I've done about 6,000 miles in it uh, and I've really, really enjoyed it. However, I thought I'd bring this video to you today, a more of an advice-based video for anyone in the market to buy one of these cars. They are becoming ever popular. Um, however, I feel that the popularity is only really starting to come out there. People are opting for these. And so seeing as I have owned this car for a little while now, I thought I'd pretty much compile all the things together which I think anyone in the market should know about when buying one of these cars. Now, as you can see, my A45S is finished in one of the more subtle colors you can get, mountain gray. You can get black, red, yellow as well. But this, I feel, is more the subtle uh, end of the spectrum, finished off with lots of gloss black uh, details and also some yellow accents, which I have added. If you are new to my channel, this car is a stage two car running pretty much bang on 500 horsepower. It's tuned by EST Performance, and we've got a nice uh, array of supporting mods on there, including a full Cobra Sport turbo back exhaust and an eventuri carbon induction kit. In terms of modifications for this car, that will be one of the talking points for uh, this video, actually. I know a lot of people who follow me also uh, modify their cars and really make them their own. And so there is a talking point which we will get uh, onto further on in the video. But I'm gonna start this video, actually, with a little tip. I know it's slightly off uh, topic uh, straight off the bat, but it is definitely the most commonly asked question. Now on my cars, I do like to run shortened plates on my cars. Um, and as you can tell, the A45S is no exception. Now, without a doubt, the most commonly asked question with this car, and in fact, whether it is an A45S or CLA45S, because of course, this video does apply to people in the market for the CLA variant. And that most commonly asked question is, how do I run uh, a shortened down plate? Simply, it does sound a little bit cowboy, but the OEM plate plinth that comes with the car when you run a standard uh, size plate I simply just took a hacksaw to it and cut it down to therefore mount my plate on the front. Now the way that the 45S's bumper is kind of made, there is no flat area to kind of adhere uh, a plate to. As you can see, you've got this kind of leading edge and that leading edge and those two together is not really enough to really stick a plate on. Believe me, I did try, it fell off after a day. Hence why if we do come a little bit closer, you can see the plate plinth behind that, which has been cut down. And yes, I know I do need to get rid of the holes. I'm gonna get those filled uh, when I have five minutes. But anyway, just thought I'd include that at the start of the video because I get so many messages about that. I just think it makes the car look a lot cleaner. Of course, maintaining the legalities of it, still running a plate on the front. Anyway, let's dive in to some of the things you should know about one of these. And like I said, it does apply to people out there looking for a CLA 45, because aside from the body differences, pretty much they are the same car. Now my first point actually involves hopping in the car for a moment, which I've got to say is a really, really nice place to be. It's a superb interior. However, there is some downsides. As this car is now getting a little bit older, I mean, my car has done just over 17,000 miles. Um, and like I said, it's pretty much three years old. It's a lovely place to be. The interior from a glance looks very high quality. And don't get me wrong, it is. There are certain aspects of the interior though, which could be improved. More towards the back, obviously in a car, most of the kind of R&D and design element is done at the front, naturally. It's where you spend all your time. And on my particular car, I have removed the rear seats just because I'm a yob. Um, and I have noticed, not because of the rear seat delete modification, but where there's obviously no seats back there, no parcel shelf or anything, I have noticed there is actually a rattle. There is quite a few rattles, dare I say, in this car actually. Um, it is quite creaky in here. If I really dive in, I mean, things do move around a bit. There is some cheap plastic here and there as well. But I mean, overall, it's a lovely interior, no matter how you spec it. Of course, mine with all the yellow uh, details here and there. Fit and finish of the interior is very high quality, but then when you live with the car, when you do a lot of miles in it, you do start to notice that it's not perfect. That rattle that I mentioned though is actually in the boot. Now up here, you of course have the rear window and you have the OEM uh, factory trim, which again, 
is quite cheap plastic. Now, annoyingly, the rattle is basically where this uh, trim is kind of hitting against the very bottom of the glass. So if I can mimic it here, like that. You can see basically where the trim is hitting against the glass. Now, I presume maybe from you, there was like a little foam bung in there to stop there being movement here. But I mean, after three years, 17,000 miles, it's definitely gone if there was one there in the first place. And where I have removed the rear seats on the car, that is now definitely more prominent now. More on that in a second. Now, the other thing I want to make you guys aware of to do with the interior of the 45S, be it A-Class or CLA-Class, um, and that is the seats. If you have the Premium Plus pack on this car, you do have some added extras, as I'm sure you are aware, such as the rear wing, the front canards, and also a lot of spec on the inside, including the AMG Performance bucket seats. Visually, they look stunning. Of course, on my car, we have the yellow piping with the yellow stitching with the gray central section and the black uh, outer section. They are really, really nice looking seats. Now, over long journeys, I'll be honest, they're not that comfy. They look quite supportive um, and cushioned, but it's something to do with the backrest, which isn't the comfiest. I mean, for those that aren't subscribed to my channel already, I have a Trackspec Mark 7 Golf R with carbon fiber bucket seats. Those seats, hand on heart, are much comfier than these. And that is not an exaggeration in the slightest. I don't have any lumbar support on, that has all been removed. I'm not normally a fan of that anyway, but it's almost like there is something in the back rest, which just makes it quite uncomfy uh, if you're in the car for a few hours. But yeah, those are the two things I've noticed to do with the inside of the car, which I think is worthy of being mentioned. Don't get me wrong, I love the interior of this car and I do really enjoy driving it. It's just, there's a couple of things which I've mentioned, which, like I said, felt like I needed to mention. Anyway, more towards the outside. Maintenance on these cars is fairly reasonable, to be honest. And if you want to learn more about that, then check out a recent video on the channel where I had this car serviced recently. I go more in depth with that kind of thing. But maintenance related, we're going to talk tyres. Now on the 45S's, the front track is very, very wide. It's a lot wider than, say, the rear, for example. If you look at the car down the side, these front arches really do flare out quite a lot. We've got two, four, five section tyres all round. It's a square setup on this car. And where this car is set up, especially if it's lowered like what mine is that's another thing i've done to the car which i had forgotten actually tire wear is an issue this is also prominent with the 35s as well so it's not just the 45 s's but definitely something you guys need to be aware of the inside edges of the front tires wear very very easily and quickly on this car luckily for me i've managed to really ooze out all of the tire usage i can by basically doing a front to back these tyres that are on the car now are the originals. As I said, done 17,000 miles, which is not too bad at all. However, shortly after I bought it, I noticed that, well, whilst the inside edge wasn't completely bold, it was a lot more worn than the rest of the tyre moving towards the outside. And so what I did in order to basically maximise the usage out of the tyres is I swapped the ones from the rear to the front because the rears obviously don't get worn as much, but that is something to really look out for because when you look at the tyres, I mean, visually, from the outside, they are not worn at all. However, in some cases inside, that is really where you can get the wear on this, purely because of how it's set up and warning, if you do lower the car, that's when this can happen even more. You get more wear out of them uh, just because of how the camber is slightly adjusted when you lower the car. Moving to the back of the car once again then, we are then greeted once again by the nice fixed spoiler. Fixed spoiler, because you might have seen it in a previous clip, this is, very unfixed. I mean, that, believe it or not, is normal with all of the A45S's. It's really not the most substantial rear wing. Now, this is only on the cars which are optioned with the Premium Plus pack. As I mentioned, you do get some other extras, such as the front canards on the front and also the diffuser and these little flicks down here towards the edge of the bumper as well. However, this spoiler, especially when you are opening and closing the boot really does move a lot. I mean, check this out. It's really not very good, is it really? And it's not just the spoiler that's moving, it's the whole kind of deck lid there as well. 
should probably stop doing that to be honest but believe it or not that is normal so something to be aware of if you use this car every day and you really want to get one with the premium plus pack i'll be honest i don't blame you they look mega be aware if you are loading stuff in and out of the boot a lot just don't slam the boot don't just go from up here and just absolutely smack it down i normally have a habit of basically just resting it down here and then just doing that it still moves even just from dropping it from there but don't slam it because it's not really fixed on very well i mean <laughs> not good As I mentioned, my car is quite heavily modified, running currently stage two package, running about 500 horsepower. Now that annoyingly is kind of as far as you can go. So something to really make you guys aware of, if you're looking to buy one of these to really modify it heavily, like what I'm doing, then you're gonna have to be a little bit patient. These cars, whilst they have been around for about three years or so, this is nearly three years old, it's got its first MOT in about a month's time, actually. The market for them is tiny compared to the VAG cars, so such as the Mark 8 Golf R or the 8Y Generation S3. And basically what that means, aftermarket companies who build, say, cooling mods or performance mods, that kind of thing, they're not concentrating on these cars. They're concentrating on the cars which are more popular and have a bigger market and a bigger audience for them. Annoyingly, that has meant that this car has kind of been a little bit neglected, hence why I said uh, what I said at the beginning, where I feel that these really are starting to really get off the ground now uh, after people have realized the potential. And potential is a very, very important word. This car, stage two, 500 horsepower. Very good. This car is dying for some cooling mods. I mean, the temps in this car do get really hot. I've had the car at Santa Pod. Not only have I run a quarter mile time of just over 10 seconds, we've got an 11.18 on this car currently as it sits right now at stage two, which is exceptionally fast. It's so nearly a 10 second car, stock turbo, everything. But going back to the potential, this car has heaps of it. I mean, for example, the fueling, you know, the aspect of a car which normally really holds them back. This car has the fuel pumps from an E63S. You know, the car that can do a thousand horsepower on stock fuel pumps. So this car, theoretically, in terms of the fuel pumps, can hit a thousand horsepower. Probably can't anyway, for multiple other reasons, but still, it's got so much potential. Even the gearbox software is not unlocked yet. That's what I mean. There are turbo options out there, which I will be exploring as soon as I can. However, there's no point doing a hybrid turbo or a turbo upgrade when you can't go into the gearbox and map it and adjust the torque limits. So yeah, it's frustrating. I've said about it a lot on my channel, but it will be an awesome car once people start realizing that they are awesome and then the companies then come out with a load more mods. Now, I really don't want any of what I'm saying uh, in this video to put anyone off or to really shadow over the fact that this car is genuinely brilliant. Um, and I think for a bit of comedic value for the last point, it's gonna be a little bit of a funny one. One which annoyingly is very common, but it's only a very small thing. You may have already noticed it earlier on in the video, but it's to do with the badge. Annoyingly, it's very common for this to happen. The T to come off the turbo badge. <laughs> so it's now an Urbo. I mean, it's a bit of a joke, but it is quite annoying. And this can happen from one of, well, now I found out one of two reasons. The most common way is actually when you're washing the car, when you have the wash mitt, you know, you're soaping the car, getting all the stuff off of it and cleaning it, and you wipe it like that. Basically what that does the little fibers of the mitt can actually dig in to the T um, and rip it off because the T is actually, well, in terms of this badge, it's quite exposed and it's not really attached to this bottom layer which links to the Formatic Plus badge. But the second reason which <laughs> I didn't realize was possible and probably very, very unlucky, which is how mine happened, was when I was driving down a country road, there was a Range Rover in the middle of the road, typical, um, and basically there was a bit of a branch sticking out, luckily no damage, um, but basically it hooked the T, pinged it off. I only found that out because the car was a little bit dirty at the time and I could see a line basically where the hedge had kind of grazed down the side, but not damaged it. And that line led straight directly to the T. So the missing T is somewhere in the local vicinity, but not on my wing, which is very annoying. So yeah beware of that. I've known people uh, in the owners groups who have gone through kind of two or three turbo badges on their wings because it just keeps on happening. 
So there we have it. That is a little bit of an insight on some of the things which I've noticed, some of the little things which bug me uh, in about a year's ownership of this A45S. It's an awesome car. I don't want anything uh, that I've said in this video, as I mentioned, um, to distract it from being an awesome car because it really is very, very cool. No car is perfect and there's always things which come to light and you realize after owning a car. So hopefully this has become uh, a little bit informative for anyone out there looking to purchase an A45S or a CLA45S. Personally, can't go wrong with either. You'll have great fun. I do plan on doing a few more of these videos uh, going forward, as you may have seen over on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me over at Hampshire Photography. And also let me know in the comments or over on Instagram if you have a car like this, which you want me to do this kind of video on. It's a new thing which I'm gonna try and do um, because I like giving people hopefully useful feedback when it comes to cars and hot hatches. However, as I said, that is it for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.